I'm uh, Joseph Wu. I'm a professor and director of the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute. I work at the uh, St uh, Stanford University School of Medicine, and currently I'm the president of the American Heart Association. A hundred years ago, having a heart disease is uh, considered a death sentence. Uh, but right now, uh, we have advances in uh, interventional cardiology, in which we could put in new stents. Uh, we have advances in uh, cardiac electrophysiology, in which we could put in this very small pacemaker, this, you know, even the size that's smaller than your uh, pager. Uh, we have advances in open heart bypass surgery, uh, advances in medications uh, that allows our heart failure patients uh, to live longer. And so they are a whole laundry list, uh, but if I have to just come down to one uh, single most recent advance, uh, I would have to say it's medication related to uh, Wagovi or uh, uh, semaglutide uh, or tazipatide. These are medications that uh, allow our patients uh, to lose their weight. Um, these medications act by uh, blocking, the, uh, by activating the GLP. It's a GLP agonist and it causes the patient to feel like they're more uh, full in terms of uh, after they eat. Uh, they also cause uh, the body metabolism to change so that on average, patients who are on this medication loses about 10% of their body weight. And that translates over in about three to four years, that translates into significant decrease in cardiovascular mortality uh, based on a recent trial uh, called the SELECT trial uh, that was published uh, last year. So I'm sure um, the audience are aware of the, uh, these uh, medications and uh, you'll see a significant uptake of uh, the use of this medication in cardiovascular medicine as well. The advances in AI machine learning, uh, contrary to what uh, people believe, is not going to replace physicians. I think it's going to help us uh, facilitate our workload so that we're able to see more patients uh, with the assistance of AI machine learning. For example, uh, I think in the future it should be uh, possible for a physician to uh, talk to a patient and have the AI machine learning record all the conversations. It should be possible for a patient to report some type of symptoms into th this uh, AI machine learning uh, computer software and have the computer software spit out the top two or top three potential diagnoses. For a lot of the imaging that we have in cardiology, uh, for example, echo imaging, MRI imaging, e uh, and also EKG, the AI machine learning should be able to help the physicians better uh, diagnose, uh, better predict uh, what the uh, underlying uh, disease uh, conditions are. Some of the advances in genetic medicine, I think the public uh, may have heard of, uh, for example, the FDA back in December 2022, uh, approved the first in, uh, first in usage of um, gene therapy for sickle cell disease. And that's really a tremendous advance uh, because uh, gene editing, you know, that came about around 2010. And well, within a span of about 14 years, we're now able to take a patient who has sickle cell disease <clears throat> and genome edit uh, the hematopoietic cell uh, to correct uh, and also uh, to uh, correct the condition and then put it back into the same uh, patient so that we can uh, uh, cure the sickle cell disease. You will see uh, many examples of this in the next uh, five to 10 years. In cardiology, I think the low hanging fruit will be uh, some of the uh, genetic diseases are due to familial hypercholesterolemia. And then the third uh, aspect is uh, something that's dear to my heart. Uh, we work uh, quite a bit on what we call induced uh, pluripotent stem cells. And that's an example of uh, taking patient's blood, generating their induced pluripotent stem cells that then allows us to uh, differentiate into patient's heart cells, uh, vascular cells. And then we then take these patients uh, heart and vascular cells to do drug testing, essentially doing a clinical trial on the patient without testing on the patients directly, but using the stem cells as a surrogate. And that's why we call it clinical trial in a dish. Uh, Stanford uh, um, Cardiovascular Institute, we have a big uh, footprint, big portfolio on this, uh, trying to use this uh, for discovering new drugs and for uh, personalized medicine. And as I explained, it essentially, we could take a patient's blood and or skin 
and then generate the iPS cells. And then from these iPS cells, essentially they're the same as embryonic stem cells. We can then differentiate all the different cell types in our body without the ethical concerns. Essentially anything, you could, we could differentiate brain, heart, liver, kidney, muscle, uh, pretty much all cell types. And you can also uh, differentiate to sperm cells. You could differentiate to egg cells and think about implication for couples who are infertile. Uh, you could take the husband's uh, skin, generate the iPS cell, and differentiate sperm. Or likewise, uh, wife's uh, skin, generate the iPS cell, and differentiate to uh, you know, ovary cells. And this is a tremendous example for a woman who have ovarian cancer, or tremendous for men especially our soldiers uh, who go to the battlefield and uh, step on their mind or something and then uh, have their lower torso blown up. Yeah. yeah, I'm a cardiologist and I would say cardiology is probably uh, one of the best fields, if not the best field out there. It combines both medicine and surgery uh, together because we are considered the quote unquote the cowboys uh, in uh, medicine because you know, we can put in pacemakers, we can put in stents, we can put in artificial uh, valves, a whole bunch of uh, uh, interventions that the cardiologist can do. And on top of that, uh, we are taking care of our patients who have urgent medical needs, so patients who are dying from heart attack, from heart failure, have cardiac arrhythmias. There are a lot of uh, advances uh, that have occurred, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, over the past 100 years. Just think about the tremendous advances in bypass surgery, in, in interventional cardiology, in electrophysiology, in medicine to treat heart failure, medicine to treat uh, uh, arrhythmia. So tremendous uh, amount of advances. The field will continue to grow and evolve. And I think for the young trainees who want to go into this field, uh, in my opinion, uh, the sky's the limit. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.